Hi everybody. Um, today is Thursday of this week here, the week beginning on June the 15th. Uh, the teams posted their progress videos and uh, comments were also posted. So uh, congratulations on doing it. Uh, but let me let me make uh, some remarks and I will make uh, remarks uh, in part by referring to uh, what we had as instructor instructions in the syllabus and also based on as I mentioned to you before uh, on uh, what the sharks in the shark tank would say about these companies so remember in a previous video I said well watch a few episodes of the shark tank and prepare your presentations uh, so that you are presenting to the sharks, right? So, okay, you've done this. Uh, midterm is waived, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's go to one comment on uh, comments on progress pro uh, videos. Uh, so I saw the comments here. Make sure you meet the requirements of the. Uh, the syllabus okay so the syllabus states that the section with your comments so you have the form and then here on the comments you should have between 250 words and 1000 words so going either below that or above would not be following the rules and as I mentioned in a previous video um, following rules is very important because when you have a company uh, and we want the scores to be more bu as business-like as possible so when you have a company instructions are given for example for you to bid for uh, contracts and if you don't follow the instructions quite often you're just removed from the race so you have to know how to follow instructions so to see if you met those requirements what you would do is essentially you would just uh, copy uh, the, the content here put in a word file and then you see the number of words so for this particular comment I'm not trying to pick on anybody uh, I just, it, this might have been a second uh, comment or something like that but if this was the comment provided by someone you would not met, have met the requirements because it has 119 words. So take a look at what you've uh, put in comments. If you have not followed the rules, just repost your comments following the rules. And uh, it, 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 it's not ideal if you do that, but late is better than never. And it's better than uh, not meeting the requirements and just leaving it the way it is. Now, on the presentation, so let's go to the first one here. I'm not going to play it because otherwise there will be an echo effect here. It's not going to be very good. Uh, quality of the sound here is good, uh, but I had tremendous problems playing this. Okay, I would have preferred it to be a video like it was done by the other team. So uh, for next, uh, for the next week, I would strongly recommend you do a video. Uh, if I were a shark in a shark tank, I would uh, basically say that in this presentation, you told me already what you what uh, I already know because the sharks to evaluate a product, they would probably know the competition already. So they would be more interested in knowing how you're going to be successful what you're going to be doing the name of your organization right uh, you may you may say oh, come on you didn't tell us in the syllabus that we needed to provide the name of the company well I'm leaving it up to you but if I was um, a business person interested in um, say investing in your company uh, or buying uh, or using services I would like to know the name of the company uh, and I would like to know what you have that is special and how you're going to also get customers, right? In a previous video, I mentioned to you this would be a challenge for you to convince me and the rest of the class 
um, that you will get customers uh, instead of just starting a company and then uh, putting your money in and then uh, or getting investors money and then just going bankrupt okay so this is a problem that I had so a couple of problems I have with this presentation one was the format I suggest a video as I said not not this not videos embedded a, a video that plays uh, like a YouTube video uh, so I recommend you use the the format that the other team uh, used if you want to redo this based on the comments that I'm providing that would be good uh, if you don't think uh, you have the time and you want to focus more to next week's presentations presentation do that okay but don't do it this way do it um, uh, like the other team did as a video and uh, you also got comments from the rest of the class uh, that they are similar to the comments I'm making here so don't do don't use this format anymore and put yourselves in the position of uh, of an entrepreneur starting a new company and presenting that to the sharks in the shark tank watch a few of those shows you're gonna see how tough those folks are uh, and that's what you see in reality okay uh, we don't want this to be a toy project just for you to get a good grade in the class we want this to be as business-like as possible by the way, the sound quality here was good and it was more or less like my videos. The other team, again, I like the video format, but as was mentioned uh, by, in one of the comments, it was 10 minutes, not 10 or 9, but that's, that's close enough for me. But again, uh, if you're competing for a bid, uh, sometimes people have uh, so many applicants that if you just deviate from the guidelines a little bit they remove you from the competition now here I had a big problem again so I'm not uh, going to play uh, this because it would create an echo uh, effect but the sound quality at this point was good here it was much lower uh, and and here it was here it was, it was low uh, but not as low as the previous one and here it was a little bit lower so they have to have the same uh, the same sound level okay so if I play this you know and this is what you would expect from a presentation uh, in a real world right so let's say you're, you're, you, uh, you have a company and you want to get uh, funding from a group at JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs, that's a private uh, equity group. You're not going to do something like this with the uh, different sound qualities and then they listen. They're just gonna, uh, they're just gonna stop this and then move on to the next group that is competing. That's how tough it is in business, in real life. So if you want to redo this, uh, uh, that would be good. If you think you don't have the time to do this and want to focus on the next presentation, next video for next week, do that, okay? It's up to you what you're gonna do. Uh, but this was not, this would be picked apart by uh, 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 you know investors like the sharks. Again, take a look at an episode of Shark Tank imagine yourself preparing something like this with different levels of sound imagine how the sharks would react to that they would not react react well I like I like the name trucker mania uh, but for keep in mind that this is what you would have here would be more like a technology company and uh, technology companies usually have different kinds of names right just imagine Twilio, uh, Zoom, uh, Uber, um, Trucker Mania I'm not so sure okay just think about it uh, uh, as a technology company you would probably be uh, uh, if you want to get funding for your company you would probably uh, 
be presenting this to technology uh, sharks, right? In the Shark Tank, uh, key technology shark there would, is uh, Mark Cuban. He's not in all episodes. Another one that is tech savvy, tech savvy is uh, the, uh, the the nasty one. Uh, I think is uh, O'Brien O'Reilly. O'Reilly, I think uh, Kevin O'Reilly. I think uh, his name. So, uh, so you have some uh, tech savvy uh, sharks um, there that, uh, that that you can see more or less. Uh, you know how they. They, they like it and, and uh, many of the uh, Shark Tank episodes which you can find easily on YouTube um, they have uh, technology uh, companies uh, presenting so but I like the fact that you have a name right I'm assuming this is the name for the company because I, I was having ta a hard time uh, hearing what was said here and by the way my sound is pretty loud so the fact that I was not able to hear properly is a problem okay I assume that uh, you can hear this video that I'm preparing and if you're using a tool like me like Camtasia uh, you have to set it up like uh, I put the audio at the maximum here this is the maximum level that is being captured so that everybody can can uh, can can hear what I'm what I'm saying. So I expect videos to have the same sound um, that quality that my videos have. Now you may say, ah, oh, what if I, what if the four of us or five of us want to make a, a presentation? How can we make sure that all the the audio the audios have the same quality? Well, figure out, right? If you cannot overcome a problem like that, how would you even be able to start a company and succeed? Uh, go from zero revenues to a billion dollars. Uh, you're not going to get anywhere. So now, there are always simple solutions and more difficult solutions, right? So I guess you could get a more difficult solution that would take more work. A simpler solution would be just one person uh, making uh, the presentation which is fine with me okay uh, it's not a problem uh, as long as the team leader uh, makes sure to tell me that if some people did less work I need to know that um, because that person should get a lower grade right so what you could do is that if somebody is doing all of the, the presentations all of the videos um, then the others have to do more on the report so there is always ways you can balance the work of uh, everybody and and that would be a simpler solution but there are other ways you can solve this problem by merging uh, different uh, videos that have the same uh, sound quality so these are my comments uh, for the presentation unfortunately here I could not understand most of what I said and it looked interesting what I was being said but I, I am afraid that you might not have uh, said much about how you would do well what will be unique in your company uh, how you will succeed in getting customers uh, and so on right Typically, if you want to compete with a company that already exists, like Uber Freight, and it's dominant, and even if Uber Freight is not dominant, we know that the probably the most dominant one in this space uh, is C.H. Robinson. So you have serious competition. So one way to really succeed at first is to specialize, to do something more specialized. Right, so either focus only on, um, uh, you know, transportation of certain things in a particular area. Let me give you an example. So let let's say I go to. Uh, let me pause and and bring up Google Maps here. Okay, so this is Google Maps, and uh, this 
point here is uh, a port called Lazaro Cardenas. And this port here is very competitive uh, in terms of pricing. Uh, it also has some characteristics that make it very competitive uh, with other uh, ports like Los Angeles and, um, and uh, Long Beach. Uh, for the transportation of products that come from here, from via the Pacific, from Asia. So, in, in fact, uh, Asia, much of uh, many manufactured products uh, that come into the United States, they come from Asia. So, in quite a few of them, and more and more uh, this is happening, they come via this port, uh, Lázaro Cárdenas in part because the, it's a low-cost operation. There is a company then, that railroad company, that transports from Lázaro Cárdenas all the way here to uh, Laredo, and that's KSU, Kansas City Southern. So if you had a trucking company that would uh, interface with this railroad, that trucking company would do, be doing would be could specialize in something called uh, intermodal transportation. So the trucks would get the containers uh, directly on top of them, and instead of having those uh, other types of vans that are used for transportation of other things, they would actually just take those containers and then take them elsewhere. So J.B. Hunt, uh, as far as I understand, is strong in this particular area, uh, intermodal transportation. Werner is stronger in, um, in the transportation of groceries. So uh, these are things that, th these are things you can consider to, um, to specialize. Uh, and then have a company that is more specialized. I'm not telling you to do exactly this, but I'm, I'm just giving you examples of things that you can do. Um, in previous projects, I had uh, uh, teams that uh, told me that they would, the, their company would focus only on construction material transportation within Texas. And uh, yeah, you can you can uh, build a company that will grow to a, mil a billion dollars in revenues just operating in Texas, because Texas has two trillion dollars uh, in uh, gross product. So Texas has an economy the size of Brazil and India, right? Brazil is a two trillion dollar economy. So is India. Um, China is much bigger. China is uh, more like $13 trillion. But Texas is big enough that uh, that uh, you, you could have a company that operates only in Texas and you would do well. And, and doing only construction uh, 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 transportation, construction material transportation. But for that type of transportation, you need particular type of uh, uh, trucks uh, such as uh, belly dump trucks, right? Those types of vans, they're different. Now you may say, uh, the professor, the information you gave us um, on the website does not have all of that. Well, I gave you that information uh, just so you have the basics because if you're starting a company, you will find, you will want to know, you will do a lot of research and find out as much as you can about your business because otherwise you go bankrupt and you lose other people's money eventually you will lose your own money you start a company and uh, you do you you fail uh, the investors will come after you they will want you to pay back the money that they invested so you're there is always risk so you're not going to uh, want to run that risk you will want to succeed. That's what real ent entrepreneurs do. By the way, if you want to ever become a billionaire, you have to start a business. You will never become a billionaire being an employee of anybody. You have to start your own business to become a billionaire 
uh, even uh, Wall Street folks that, uh, that uh, manage money, they don't manage their own money. They start businesses and then they manage other people's money. That's how they become billionaires. Uh, say Ray Dalio uh, runs, uh, uh, he's a billionaire and he started uh, Bridgewater, uh, which is one of the largest hedge funds in the world, probably the largest. Well, he founded it, so he's a billionaire. His employees will never be billionaires. You will never be a billionaire if you are an employee of anyone, as unless you can predict the future. Then you will probably be the first trillionaire uh, to have ever lived. Uh, there are no trillionaires today. The richest person in the world is, is currently, I think, is Jeff Bezos. And his net worth is more like a, a little bit more than a hundred billion dollars. Uh, probably less now because he is divorcing his wife. His wife is going to get half of his uh, net worth or something like that, I, I would assume. So he, it's going to be less than that. And she's entitled to that because they started the company together. Uh, I'm sorry, they were married when the company before the company was successful. Uh, so that's the law. Uh, so in any event, uh, overall, I think to, to perform well in this course, I think you have to have more of the mindset of entrepreneurs that will start businesses and that will have to face the music, right? They will have to go uh, and get funding uh, or get support from folks like the sharks in the Shark Tank. So keep that in mind uh, if you redo these videos or for next week's videos. Uh, thank you very much. This concludes this video with my comments.